Hello and welcome to this kid's vlog and today uh, I'm going to be talking about Resident Evil uh, 7 Re the remake of Resident Evil 2 sorry I'm eating a carrot and uh, a little new game that's coming out called uh, Daymare 19, uh, 1998 now, before we start, I want to just say uh, my thoughts on Resident Evil 7. I will play the game, I will do a let's play of it, I'll give you my full review at the end of it, I'll give you what I liked and what I did not like, uh, I, just because I feel like it, it would be a disservice to anybody out there who would be like, well, you didn't play the game. You're right, I did not play the game, I did not uh, buy the game. I was a little disappointed with the gameplay footage, I was a little disappointed with like the direction they went, I felt like it was very much uh, not Resident Evil, let me put it that way, it didn't feel like I was playing a Resident Evil game, it felt like it was something else that was trying to be Resident Evil, uh, but it wasn't, I felt, you know what it felt like, it felt like a, uh, that whole game was built for the uh, VR experience and nothing else but the VR experience. Which, honestly, a first person Resident Evil game, I don't think. It, it, to me, I think it's just boring. I think it's just dumb. And a lot of people out there are gonna be. Uh, I do have some complaints about it. I do have some complaints about it. I do think. If you see my Let's Play of uh, the Resident Evil demo. I do think it's a, uh, I didn't like it, let me put it that way, I did not like it in the sense of it just being bland, very bland, very dull, uh, and I know people are going to say, oh, you like the Resident Evil 6 action pack extravaganza, no, I thought Resident Evil 6 devi devi deviated away from it, but at least it was fun. At least it was entertaining. At least it had structure. At least it had something where it was worth going towards. You know. And if you don't believe me, there's a guy who does a review uh, who says the same thing. Who, uh... It just didn't have a lot, to my mind. It, like, it had three in it. Like, I'll, again, I'll play the game, give you my uh, full review of it, and then we can talk further on that. Because I don't want to be that guy who says, I'm not going to play it. Because originally I wasn't going to play it, but now I'm like, alright, I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll play it. I will play the game! Um, so, yeah, uh, and as you can tell from my demo walkthrough, I was kind of bored. I was bored with it. It was kind of like, I, the reason I didn't like it as much and I didn't think I would, like, enjoy it would be because I've seen it before. We've seen it with PT. Outlast. Um, Shit, there was other ones on there. Outlast, Slenderman, every indie horror game out there, Amnesia, every fucking horror game since Slenderman from like the earlier 2000s, like say 2008 when YouTube was still fresh and was not a Nazi organization. Uh, now, it's the same thing. It's the same fucking ordeal. And it's, you know, run away from the unkillable man who gets up and mocks you and one hit kills. And it's just, it just, just to me, it just, it just was not what Resident Evil's about. And I just felt like the enemy types were just this, like, hillbillies. Like, I've seen that in Outlast, in Outlast 2. Uh, like, just the fact that, like, the enemy types, like the molded, which uh, you also took from fucking what's that game? Outlast. The Last of Us. Which I was like, m fungus? Resident Evil was scary because viruses are scarier than fungus. Like, viruses can fuck you up badly and they can multiply. Like, there's no cure for that shit. AIDS? Come on. You know. But I think this is the problem I have. Like, but I, I won't go into any furthers with the game because I do think it looks pretty. I do think it looks well made. But... Uh, I will go on and talk about the other thing I had in the video because I will put up the videos of like what I was talking about earlier in the the reviews of that and the older video I put up about Resident Evil PT the Outlasting um, was the uh, the Italian guys who made uh, the Resident Evil Reborn using the four real engine uh, who did a uh, fuck who did that Resident Evil 2 remake called Invader Studios. 
They were called Invader Games, but now they're called Invader Studios. And honestly, that's what I wanted out of Resident Evil 7, was just take whatever they did with Resident Evil 4, remove all the action bits, and give us that. Give us that slow pace, like, you know, walking around in a hallway with a gun and a flashlight in your hand, kind of like finding out where it is. And I don't mind over the shoulder. I think that, to me, gets everybody involved. Like, Dead Space did it. Uh, a lot of video games did it. Dead Space, Resident Evil 4, uh, fuck, I'm trying to think what else. Resident Evil Gears of War, yeah, but like, to me, I felt like it was more appliable. Like, not everybody, like, is into fixed camera angles, and you can make a fixed, ang fixed camera angle Resident Evil game, which I don't mind. But I feel like that, if they're gonna do the remake of Resident Evil 2, and I, I've heard they stop making it. They stop, they, they tell Invader Studio, say stop it, they invited them up to show them the progress, and they were, everybody was excited, and I thought it would be an opportunity if Capcom and uh, Osaka would be, uh, would be like, yo, listen, I know you want to make this fan game, how about you work for us and make the fan game using our real engine, take everything you learned here and put it, apply it to this. Which I thought would be cool, but now I'm a little concerned because I don't want a Resident Evil 2 to, to be like a first person. Everybody's excited about it because it's like, um, it's that, you know, oh, fixed camera angles. I just don't want more of the same shit I've seen before. Let's go back to basics. Let's go back when horror games were cool back in the 90s. Hell, Resident Evil 4, uh... The beta was actually pretty interesting. Like, the way they set it up, like, fixed camera angles, but, like, you can automatically switch to the first person. I like the fact that you have a character who can hold a flashlight, which Silent Hill did that, and I think that was pretty interesting. Um, my biggest... Again, and again, my biggest worry, though, is that they're gonna go first person and that VR is gonna ruin everything. That's what I hated about Resident Evil 4, 7, was the fact that it was... I felt like it was a VR game, like, separate from anything else than that. You know, they didn't... It, just to me, it was like, oh, it's back to, like, it's back to horror now. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you my review of Resident Evil 7 when I play it. Uh, and to me, I just felt like... I don't know. Like, don't do VR. Don't do first person. Just give me the Resident Evil experience that I wanted. And I think uh, Invader Games did that. And I, will, I wish they were continuing play, be, playing that and just have Capcom be like, yo, we're gonna just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sub it off to you. You can use our tools. We'll work with our people. You work with yours and we can make this Resident Evil 2 game really good. Um, but I'm actually excited because Invader Games actually didn't stop. They continued to make something that was extraordinary. A product called Daymare, which honestly people say it's a stupid name, but I like the name title. It's Daymare 1998, which honestly, yeah, I wouldn't mind another survival horror game taking place in the 90s, and it's very reminiscent of those horror games of like Resident Evil, Parasite Eve 1 and 2, Silent Hill, Alone in the Dark, uh, Extermination, uh, I'm trying to think what else. Just all those, like, really great games back in that day. And I can see some, like, the influences from, like, other survival horror games in there. Like, you got Dead Space, you got... Fuck, they, ha they actually have a documentary showing what they were influenced by. I think there was, like, The Thing, uh, the, the Evil Within, which I think is the real Resident Evil 6, but... This is a cool idea, like, you know, it's an indie game made by people who were big fans of the 90s survival horror games, and they're bringing back that classic survival horror, that classic survival horror game, in my mind. They're not doing another PT, they're not doing another Outlast, they're not doing another first-person horror game, Amnesia, or Layers of Fear, or these first-person horror games that are just so boring and just so redundant, and I know, it's funny because back then, that was the case with the big title games. Everybody was doing that third-person fixed-camera horror game. And, you know, now it's like, oh, that's... And when that became original, it was like, oh, that's original! And everybody started doing it, and that becomes sa you know, saturated. I think... And this is something, too, I will say. I I'm excited because they took the elements of Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space, like the controls, tightened it up a little bit, like slowed it down, like they didn't give you the freedom to run, which was the biggest problem with Resident Evil 6, was you just, you could free run, which you didn't have to hold down a button, you could just press down the button and run. 
sure you had a sprint, but I like the creepiness of just like slowly walking and like slowly creeping, and that's that's what I missed from Resident Evil, uh, you know, the old Resident Evil games. And the fact that, like, it was reasonable how these characters ran, because you couldn't full sprint in a, you know, closed environment. But, I, again, I'm gonna, I don't want to be bashing Resident Evil 7, because where the fuck is that Chris DLC, that No More Heroes? I mean, Daymare, I think, uh, would be a great return to that, because I want to see more of that. I mean, like, in the game, so uh, let me describe Daymare, because Daymare is kind of a 90s horror game, and it's going to be taking place of, like, it's gonna be it's gonna be viewed for like through three different protagonists, uh, helicopter pilot who was carrying a virus, so this is gonna be like Resident Evil, uh, a hunk like figure from Hades who's kind of cynical, and a park ranger. Which honestly, I want to see how this is all played out, you know, and just see how the story goes because I like the I like this idea of a small town being infected and you're trying to survive a small town. Like Resident Evil with, uh, with Raccoon City from Resident Evil 3 and 2. Uh, I also like the fact that some of the enemies are kind of reminiscent of the thing, but also Parasite Eve with like the whole disfigurement of like, because in Parasite Eve, the disfigurement of like the animals and how like they were just forced evolution. You know, their bodies were like forced to evolve and like the bodies couldn't keep up, so like exposed muscle and you had like very disgusting creature things, but without the, you know, shooting fireballs and shit like that. Speaking of which, there are some elements in this game from other survival horror games. Like, in the demo, uh, there, the, the character is walking around and he goes up these stairs, and he sees a phone booth with a blue light blinking. I'm thinking phones are gonna be your save point. Like in Parasite Eve, like the how they, the save points were in the original game, and it was just like the phones, which I thought were, was pretty interesting. You know, you know, because Resident Evil had the typewriter, Silent Hill had a notebook, uh, then a red square, then a pentagon, pentagram, or sigil. Uh, and uh, I think that's very interesting. Um, another thing I like about it is the fact that they did every, they, they kind of made it more, like, in-game. Like, in Resident Evil, you had to pause the game, uh, check your inventory, and then look at what you had and see like you know how much ammo you had here how much ammo you had there and your health too so you had to check your health as well but you could also see that on the player how he would limp and change the evolution of that uh but with the game, well, like if you've ever played the resident evil on the uh the dreamcast any of the resident evil games they show your health which i actually liked on the memory card so one other thing i do like about this game too is the fact that you do when you do check your ammo you're also checking your health so like you have a little like computer thing there when you empty up your clip it, see, it shows you how much ammo you have and your light on your arm is basically your uh, either your navigation or your health because it was like blinking in the original game showing your heartbeat which that's a reminiscent of Resident Evil and what they did in that game uh, that uh, their uh, reborn fan mage uh, game where he was checking his pulse and it was showing the pulse right there um what else let me think what else I like about this just the atmosphere it feels like a Resident Evil game it feels like a Resident Evil game that we should have had from Resident Evil 7 and 6 uh, and it's just, it, 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 just the enclosurement, the zombies, or whatever the mutants are going to be called in this. And honestly, like, with the, the, the Melton Man, I didn't think was a big enemy. I didn't think he was scary. I think he was kind of like, just a tough enemy. But I, just the way he moved, he, he was kind of stiff, and he can only move his arms like this. He was like, he was like a stuffed suit animal, in a sense. Oh, excuse me. Uh... You know what I mean? Like, he, the guy could only move his, like, lower torso and he couldn't move his arms like this. Um, yeah, that's another thing I like about it. I like the fact that there's a flashlight feature. And I hope, you know, instead of just on your chest, they actually have, like, this. Which, honestly, that is kind of cool. Like, that's what a cop would do or, like, a soldier. Like, you know, switching the flashlight to that. Again, like they did in Resident Evil 2 Remake, which was beautifully done. Um, another thing I will say, though, and uh, something I do want to see in this game, in, uh, in Daymare, is a knife. 
knives, bring knives back, because I feel like the joke in that, like, again, I saw the Markiplier gameplay, and, you know, there was a joke in there where the cop gives him a pocket knife, and he says, a knife? How useless is this? Honestly, like, the knives they had in Resident Evil were, like, big old buck knives that were, like, the blades were, like, this big. Like, Chris's blade was, like, military survivalist style. Like, if done properly, you could kill a zombie easily. Like, ram it through its, like, soft skull or, like, in the back. And just, I don't know. Like, that's something I want to see in the next Resident Evil games. Like, if they ever do proper Resident Evil games instead of this, like, gimmicky VR shit. Which, honestly, let's get away from the molding and go back to base. Uh, one other thing I do like about... Uh... The <laughs> I want to say about Dame Air is the fact that, yeah, I want to see more games like this. I'm tired of games and first-person horror games where you're playing as weak characters. You're vulnerable and you're scared. You're, you're just a, oh, you can easily kill. And how I don't want to play games to feel insignificant. I want to play games to feel stronger. You know, not you know to feel like I can take on the world in a sense, but still have that like, oh shit, I could die if I'm not careful. Like Resident Evil was a very you know interesting slope. It went from this, like, you're shit out of luck, you're not in a good situation, you're in, like, the weak zone, and then when you progress, you get stronger and stronger, and they throw more shit at you, you gotta survive it. And that's been Resident Evil. Like, it's been a per it's like aliens. You start off, you're kinda scared, you're kinda weak, and then at the end, you're like, fuck this shit, I'm tired of this fucking thing chasing me, I'm gonna blow it out of the airlock, or blow it up with, you know, blow it up with a rocket launcher. But I'm off, going off rants here about my favorite game franchise. This is the thing I will say, though, about the new Resident Evil. If they do it properly. If they do it... Why am I still talking about Resident Evil? I'm talking about dating this game look like it's going to be reminiscent of that. Like, I'm okay with that. Like, and also, I like the fact that there's a hint of, like, what these enemy types are weak against. And it looks like fire. Or it looks like water, excuse me. It looks like they're not very resistant to, towards water, which makes sense. Like, like it's the same way with the creatures from uh, the signs. Even though a lot of people didn't like that movie, I liked it. Um, yeah, I'm hoping for like better enemy types in this game because if they're reminiscent of the thing, I wouldn't mind seeing something that is terrifying of the thing. Like, I want to see like, granted, the melted man was kind of scary, but I want to see like what they had in the concept art of, like, creatures that had, like, half their skin melted off, like, half muscular skeleton creatures with, like, bones, like, what is this virus and what can it do? Like, is it, like, an alien virus? Is it, like, a man-made pathogen? What is it? Like, I want to know. What I want to see in the next, uh, survival horror games, uh, to be exact, and what I want to see be done in these horror games like this is like I don't know I have a lot of thoughts and concerns but I also have some high hopes like granted these guys look like they are big fans of like the 90s survival horror game their hashtag is fear of the 90s which I'm like fuck yeah that was when like video games were great like Resident Evil for the most part you know love it or hate it was a really good game and influential and people said that like oh they copied of they stole Alone in the Dark and Alone in the Dark like Okay, first of all, Alone in the Dark was a good game. It was a classic game, but Resident Evil did it better. And their tank control scheme was a lot better than, say, anything that came out during that time. Yeah, you got a lot of other games who did it better, but, like, they actually had a tightly well net. And I think, like, the progression from Resident Evil 1 to 3, 3 had the best because it wasn't, like, staggering. It wasn't, like, slow. It was very fast-paced and movable. Pliable, I should say, because you can go up and down stairs without pressing a button. Without pressing a button, and except for like stairs or no, for doors. Excuse me. With other stairs, it was just going to be walking up and then. So, what can I say about the future of this? What can the future bring of this? Well, if this is successful, and I want to promote this too, because these guys are doing a great job with this. They look like they have or they look like they have an idea and I want to see this game and I want to promote it. Like I want to promote. It. I'll give you free advertisement. I'll make an ad 
That's straight up from the 90s. Nothing like that uh, that, that, that did shit fest known as no, uh, Mighty Number no. 9, no. Something that's very classic to that, like, time and era. Like, the jo like George A. Romero, God rest his soul. Uh, his his uh, trailer for Resident Evil 2 in Japan. I want to do something like that. But, yeah, I mean, if Res if Capcom sees this and sees that, so the success of Daymare, they should have said, fuck, we should have gotten these guys to do it. And, honestly, yeah, I mean, if Capcom can make Resident Evil 2... The remake of Resident Evil 2 as good as the first game, even though they don't have Shinji Mikami, even though they don't have the original guy who did Resident Evil 2, I would still play it and see what they do differently. Because that RE engine actually looks good, and I want to see... Because they do photo... They say they actually have some photo photorealistic things. They take photorealistic images of different things and apply it to the game. That I hope they put bring back spiders, and I hope they make the liquor scarier. I hope they make every other creatures, the monsters and mutations, the abominations, the giant insects, as scary as they were back. Like, just think about it. If, like in Resident Evil, that's one of the things I liked about it was it had those abominations, it had those things. It wasn't just a zombie game. But this is my little rant here. I've, I've been I promised myself I would make this a short little vlog. I'm jumping all over the place, but overall, I want to see Capcom succeed with Resident Evil 2 to remake. I want to see uh, Invader Games make this game, and I want to promote it. I want to give them money. I want to throw money at them to be making this. I know Kickstarter, I know people are kind of concerned with Kickstarter and the game making there, but honestly, these guys look like they have the intention to make this game good, and I want them to be good. I want this game to be great. So support Daymare. If you liked Resident Evil, support Daymare uh, 1998. And if you're a big fan of the Resident Evils from uh, the 90s, uh, the classic Resident Evil, not 7's first-person VR extravaganza, go support it. I'm Jack, and this is This Kid's Vlog. Take care.